Fishing for slab coho on the jig today. We had no success steelheading. <laughs> it's going on the barbecue tonight, don't worry about it. steelhead in a remote creek. Excited to get out there. A bit of a boat ride. Maybe we'll see some uh, wildlife. Oh, the early bird gets the worm, they say. The early bird gets the worm. You know, the early bird gets the worm. The early bird gets the worm. I'm not one for morning, then guess what? The second mouse gets the cheese. I don't know how I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get used to this. A camera in your face? Just pick, they say just picture me naked. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> So while these guys are blowing up um, Rob's new boat, I'm gonna set this crab trap down. We can do a bit of fishing. When we come back, maybe we'll have some uh, some crabs. back then he's gonna row to shore in that um, let's see your J stroke Coast Guard certified tender and that should be entertaining so we'll we'll cheer him on you're doing He'll good Bob and uh, yeah start the hike check it out the water looks a bit higher but uh, that bump of water would have brought some fish in. So there's gonna be fish there. It's just a question of whether or not there's fishable water. It's not turbid, it's clear. So visibility won't be an issue, it'll just be flow. And we do need to cross it. So that might be another factor. Way to morning juice or is it? It's already almost 11. He made it, despite all my belief. I'm gonna go with, uh, Four hooked. Roberto? I'm gonna go with uh, two hooked. Craig? One. One? Sorry guys. Just one between the three of us? Yeah. Well who's gonna get it? Nego Nelly. A spoon. A spoon? Yeah. Who's using spoons Ooh. here? Yeah. Get out of here, man. Take your spoons and get out of here. <laughs> this is fly hey, water look right only. Here. Fly who's water holding only. the spoon rod? Who's holding the spoon rod? Yeah, who is holding the spoon? You bring groaning along? Who is holding you the spoon? He brings spoons. <laughs> who who does spoons on water like this. I, I don't like to do this. Like I said, I'm a purist. I think Craig back there is a purist too. But um, some people, won't mention any names, like to bring a backup as ammo. So <laughs> Rob's got a spoon just in case it proves to be, we, 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 don't, we can't bring anything up to the fly. He likes to leave saying that he's hooked to fish. He's a numbers guy. Oh, it's ripping. Oh, way higher. Already to the spoon. He didn't even put a fly on. We're here. The river's clear, but it's a raging, raging river. There's a little pocket here. We're gonna try swinging something through. Rob already threw a spoon on because he's feeling that discouraged. Let's go bump down in front of Rob. Five feet of T14. That little ditty. Try to flush one out of there.
it's turned into one of those situations that it's just going to be a struggle just to get a fish now. It's funny how that happens, eh? We're just walking down here. Rob starts screaming, got one, got one, got one. Where is it? Hey, how do you get over there? Right through here, most likely. Just be careful. Oh, you're in a good spot here. I could have got him on the fly. Flop it right out there. I might try that. Yeah, I'm going to drag him right up in here, you guys. Craig, I'll give you Drop a him. Okay, there he is. So as the captain was saying, we got this rule. When I take people out, if we don't um, catch any fish, gas is on me. But uh, when we do catch a fish on a trip, especially a steelhead, then the captain of the boat, myself, doesn't pay for gas. And uh, the other uh, crew members do. So, I mean, it's always nice to catch a steelhead, but at other people's expense, you know, I'm not the one who made up the rule, but. You know I what, I think that rule it. should be on the fly. Totally on the fly. I agree. Yeah, two against yeah, one, and you lose. When you're swinging spoons, that don't count. So where did it hit it? It's just right out, uh, right in the front there. It's actually, I could see it hit it. But yeah. I watched it follow it right here. Really? Oh, he's yeah. on it. He's on it. Right in front. How long do you think it would take you guys to get out of here? What do you mean? If I left. <laughs> we wouldn't <laughs> until someone came to get us. Yeah. What kind of a question is that? You're gonna leave us? So, I'd be lying if I, I, I said it wasn't a little bit disappointing today. We, we kind of expected this, it was our only option. Got to the spot where we usually fish and it's just a raging torrent, no fishable water. And um, we hiked down, didn't really find anything. Found one little kind of slower moving section, it was almost impossible to fish from. So he better start paddling. There is a hole in that boat, guaranteed. <laughs> you hear that? There's air coming out. Paddle, baby! Well, the sun has come out. Oh, yeah. So what happened, Craig? Not fishable. And uh, so we uh, we bushwhacked and bushwhacked, and you know we, we found some some seams and some soft water, and we tried our best. Rob got one on the spoon. But we pretty much knew that it was going to look like this, you know, even though we hoped that it wouldn't look like this. But we, we were being optimists. We were. In a very pessimistic situation. Yeah, it's funny, eh? It's totally. Totally the way it goes. You, you got to hope. There's always hope. There's no point of going if you don't have that hope. No point in living. It's true. Yeah. That's deep. That is deep. Almost as deep as the river was today. <laughs> That's true. There's a river down around here that we've done well for coho, so we may go uh, throw some uh, spoons for coho. Look at that, eh? He made it. He made it! I didn't expect him to make it. Part of me was secretly hoping that he <laughs> fell in. Is that bad? One, two, three, four, five. Keeper Dungeness. We'll stick her back down. Rob's going to stick his uh, GoPro in for uh, science purposes, and we'll see if we can get any crawling in. We'll go a bit shallower. We started the day out looking for steelhead. The water was blown, so we came and we checked out some coho. And uh, we're waiting for the tide to come in. Fish are moving in in spurts. Rob just, just got one and uh, snapped him off. And then Craig hooked one. What we're using is uh, jigging rods with little jigs like this little lead head and marabou tail, that's all. Popping it and they love it. Oh man, this is, this is so weak. What happened? Oh, I saw a fish come up over here. There's, there's two pinks right there. Oh, 
we're out here fishing for meat right now. So, you know, as soon as we get our, our limit, uh, we'll go home. Uh, no sense in staying out here and catching 50, 20, 50 fish. I mean, you're just injuring them, just killing fish unnecessarily. So be, be responsible with your, your fishing. But um, yeah, we still got a few more to fill our quota. So let's go get them. around this side of Craig's boat. Holy, holy cow. Hora, <laughs> that is a haul. I told you it was heavier. Yeah, but you're such a sissy that I didn't have to make it. <laughs> I can't even get it out now. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> like, what a harvest. Here, let me give you a hand. Okay. Oh my gosh, that is heavy. I know. Six each. I think we're getting our limit in crab no today. No kidding. Wow, that there's some donkeys hole. in there too. Look at that one. I know. This thing is massive. Oh, jeez, he got me. <laughs> like we obviously we got a good haul here. This is pretty impressive. We're uh, not gonna go hungry tonight. That is a massive male dungeness. Massive. That's got to be eight inches, nine inches across the shell. Look at the size of those legs. That is serious meat right there. You don't want to get your fingers on the receiving end of those pinchers. I have, they, they'll cut you right through the skin. And you also, the other thing you want to check when you're harvesting Dungeonesses is uh, if they're soft shelled or not. Oh, okay. Soft shelled ones, Yeah. it's too late in the season, but after they molt, there'll be like no meat in it. It'll just be like a, a shell full of water. So. Crabs will shed, they, their, their, their exoskeleton does not grow, so that in order for the crab to grow, they have to shed their entire exoskeleton. So what happens is they'll, this flap 
They'll yeah. crawl right out of the back of it. No they'll leave their entire shell behind, everything. Wow. Then there'll be this like gelatinous yeah. blob, yeah. and they'll dig down into the sand, and they'll yeah. hide there till they harden up, and then they'll come out and feed when they're kind of like no got their armor again. So yeah. if you find like em shells, it looks like dead crabs on the beach. It's not necessarily a dead crab. It could be a crab that just shed its exoskeleton, and that crab is just growing bigger. Kind of cool, hey? <laughs> so the difference between a male dungeness and a female, you look at the underbelly, the wider arch is the female. You gotta throw those back. The narrow arch is the male. Pretty simple. You can keep the males. Adios! Yeah, so I'd say all in all, it was a tremendously <laughs> successful day. <laughs> oh, man. Hall of crab. Some, some awesome coho. Uh, Rob got a steelhead on the spoon, but we won't did, we yeah. won't talk about that. Yeah. Um, Not like a shining moment, but we we had a few goals today. The the biggest of which was just to have fun, and I'd say we did that. <laughs>